It's Platt, and today we head to Quebec. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So the particular beer we have today is La Fin du Monde. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, it comes to us from the fine folks at Unibrew Brewing. Um, La Fin du Monde translates into End of the World. The beer was inspired by the uh, explorers that came to the New World and literally kind of found the end of the world. So uh, thus the name La Fin du Monde. Uh, Unibrew uh, is located in Chambly, Quebec, Canada, in the French-speaking uh, part of Canada. And it kind of makes sense, uh, Belgian-style beer, which Belgian, highly influenced by the French, French Canada, makes a little sense. Uh, the company itself was founded in 1993 by Serge Racine and André Dion. Uh, this was the Montreal area's first microbrewery and kind of played a big part in the future of beer brewing in that uh, part of the world. Uh, the company itself was later brought, bought by Sleeman Brewing in 2004, which eventually a couple years later in 2006 was purchased by Sapporo. So Unibrew is part of the big Sapporo uh, portfolio of brands. So it's big beer, but start with small uh, beer. Uh, Unibrew focuses on Belgian style beers. Um, one unique thing about Belgian beers, and we've talked about this in previous videos, is that yeast plays a bigger part in the flavor profile of the beer than your your domestic lot, light lagers. Um, most of your lager beers are uh, fermented at lower temperatures, and yeast produce less flavor compounds at lower temperatures. Uh, we've talked about these Belgian-style beers tend to ferment higher temperatures, which allows the yeast to provide more flavor components. Um, to kind of show you how important yeast is to these style beers, Unibrew spent about 18 months finding the yeast strain for La Fin du Monde. So that, again, that kind of shows you how important yeast uh, play, you know, the part that yeast plays in these style beers. Um, Unibrew really helped bring back, bring a kind of craft beer re revolution to not just Montreal, but Canada as a whole. If we think about Canadian beers in the late 80s, up to the early 90s. Most people in their mind have Molson, Labatt's, Moosehead. Um, if you're of a certain age, you remember the old Adam Sandler movie, Big Daddy, where they kind of comically joke about Molson being like moonshine or whatever. And, and the Canadian style beer is kind of a take on the American lager. Uh, they didn't go the light beer direction, even though they those breweries do produce light beers, but they tend to have more of the fuller bodied premium beer and a little bit of higher ABV. Um, but again, still kind of big beer, uh, kind of generic lagers. And uh, Unibrew, again, kind of brought, helped bring craft beer to uh, Canada. Now, uh, Unibrew is Canada's probably most awarded brewery in all the big international beer competitions, your things like the Tasting Panel and the World Beer Awards. Um, several of their beers have won a lot of awards and Le Fin du Monde's probably the most awarded of their beers. So uh, one thing about Unibrew and their portfolio of beers, their beers are bottle conditioned, which means a secondary fermentation goes on inside the bottle. That means there's some yeast sediment in there. So the beer's going to be a little bit hazy. It's not going to be clear like your Bud Miller and Coors. So something to note. But I also think that, again, that kind of makes the beer unique too. Real quick, let's review some of Unibrew's other uh, beers. First, there is Maudite. Hopefully I'm saying that right. That translates into Damned. It is a 8% ABV Strong Amber Red Ale, which is kind of unique because there's a, a popular Belgian style called a Strong Golden Ale, and uh, we've seen red ales, but you don't see a lot of high ABV red ales, so I think that's kind of cool or a little uh, something unique. Next is Blanche de Chambly. It is a 5% Belgian uh, style wheat beer. If you're looking for a good summertime beer and you want something different than the American Light Lager or a Pilsner style beer, let me suggest the Belgian wheat beer. Uh, this is uh, basically similar to a Blue Moon. Blue Moon's, you know, 
based on the Belgian style wheat, but it's it's a big brewery beer. Um, but it is the style of beer if you want to throw a piece of lemon or a piece of orange in to kind of add to the flavor. Really good summertime beer. Uh, next is Etat Le Monde. This is a 4.5% Belgian style Saison that was actually inspired and brewed for Dave Mustaine and Megadeth. So all you headbangers out there, uh, give this one a try. And last but not least, Unibrew produces a beer for Trader Joe's, their vintage ale. So if you're a regular Trader Joe's shopper, keep an eye out for that one. Well, before we try this beer, let's check out the stats. All right, so today I thought I'd talk about uh, these Belgian-style beers. I, I, I talked in other videos when we reviewed these Belgian beers that a true Trappist or Abbey-style beer can only be made in roughly about 13 breweries worldwide, but that any brewery can produce a Belgian-style beer or an Abbey-style beer. And uh, there's actually some really good versions of these type of beers produced here in the U.S., and so I thought I'd go over some of the more uh, popular or more revered Belgian style beers produced here in the U.S. Uh, first is Big Bison Ale. It is a 7.2% Abbey style uh, double uh, produced by the fine folks at Crown Valley Brewing. Uh, smaller brewery, but definitely keep your eye out for this one. Uh, next is Allagash White, a 5% wheat beer or wit beer. Uh, again, that really good summertime beer. Uh, you'll get a little coriander in it, orange peel, a good summertime beer, but more flavorful, more complex. Um, again, just something a little different to try in the summertime. Again, due to the hot nature, you don't want to try, you know, too many dark or big beers, but give a good wet beer a try. This is, of course, produced by the folks at Allagash Brewing. Next is Russian River Damnation. This is a 7.7% uh, strong golden ale. Belgian style, strong golden ale, in the same vein as your Duvels and Golden Drox. I really like those style of beers. Uh, they do uh, sneak up on you, so be careful on those. But uh, really good uh, style of beer. I would definitely give this one a try. And, of course, it comes to us from the folks at Ru Russian River Brewing. Last but not least is Avery the Reverend Quad. This is a 10% ABV Belgian style quadruple. We've talked about in other videos doubles and triples. But the biggest, highest ABV, biggest malt bill of these Belgian-style beers is the Quadruple. Um, the fine folks at Avery Brewing in Denver make this variation of it. Uh, again, a really good type beer. Maybe a more, something you would drink more winter time, a winter warmer type beer. Uh, but definitely give it a try. It's, it's a beer that you should have in your rotation for sure. Well, enough about Belgian-style beers. Let's give one a try. All right, plenty of carbonation here. Fairly clear with a light, uh, slight haze. Um, sorry about the, the head. Uh, in setting this up, temperature went up, so I probably got a little more carbonation on that. Oh, you can smell... Um, I may have talked about this in other videos. Belgian beers that want to bump up their ABV instead of using an adjunct like corn syrup or rye solids, they'll actually use uh, Belgian candied sugar uh, in it. So it kind of gives it a different nose than like a straight malt bill or whatever, and you can pick up a little of that. Uh, the head is very light khaki. Um, not going to get a lot of hops on the nose of these style beers. Let's give it a try. Oh my gosh, that is nice. Um, it tastes like, you know, it, on the mouth, of, it, it starts to remind you a little bit of the Belgian style golden ale as far as it's, a, it's those lighter malts, but a lot of them, it's a bigger, a little bigger body to it or whatever. But then you start really getting that funkiness of the yeast. You do pick up a little bit of that coriander, a little bit of that clove. Um, 
and there's kind of a fruitiness to to the beer. Um, one of the terms that gets thrown out with Belgian beers is funky, but that's generally a, a farmhouse ale saison kind of thing in a barnyard kind of way. Um, this is funky in a, in a more fruit kind of way, or just, uh, again, this is not, the, the sweetness is not just a straight malt sweetness, I, I guess what I'm trying to say. Um, Body-wise, I'm going to give medium-ish, maybe medium-minus. Mi um, again, as we saw by the head of pour water, plenty, enough effervescence in this. And again, when you're dealing with bottle condition beers, uh, be prepared for swings in carbonation because depending on the temperature you keep it at, that will affect that secondary fermentation. So just a little note on that. Overall, a really good beer. Um, I remember years ago being turned on to this, and it's kind of like, well, if you think you know Canadian beers, give this a try. This is next level. And they weren't wrong on that. Uh, this this is really solidly executed beer. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you would like me to try, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.